In this video I would like to only give you an idea about the process and the different steps I took and I will explain certain details what to look out for and then I will ask you to recreate this brush in Blender and then assemble everything correctly in Fusion. However, inside the course folder there are the screenshots with the side views and top view and mesh details and also proportional uh, screenshots so you have exact um, references and there is also one blend file that actually has like a wire mesh you can use so you have exactly the same proportions okay so how did I get started this is a pretty um, dense design but actually again that's not the way how I would start modeling. So obviously I created myself some measurements and then I created based on these measurements kind of like a 3D wire mesh so I understand where maybe everything has to be. And then I started with a very fairly basic model. And you see this actually all started just with a cube and then I pushed and pulled and extruded everything so that at a certain point I started to get exactly the same proportion or flow of my uh, yeah the wire model. There are also some openings or oh, sorry there's one opening and at the moment you see this is actually done via um, a boolean operation but the problem with boolean operations no well, that's so uh, definitely uh, works fine but then I can only fill it this edge and for example this face is flat and it will remain flat and I want everything to be rather nice and smooth and organic so that means this opening I cannot create via the trim function or solid combine I have to model this. There's also here a small uh, depression and when for example I trim this this area gets nice and flat but then here you can see it gets smaller and I want this trimmed edge rather to flow along kind of like they should flow along parallel for example what I have here you can see they flow parallel so how do I get this well the trimming commands in, um, in Blender here were very good to understand maybe if I'm on the right track but then I have to model everything. So this is a very basic mesh model it doesn't have enough polygons so what I did then was make one copy of that mesh and then I applied a level of one boolean modifier you see then the mesh is actually a lot denser and that gives me for example here with the end the, uh, the ability to sculpt everything so let's give this maybe quickly a try so shift D let's make a copy then this and this and this we remove and for example let's go maybe level of 2 apply go into edit mode and there we are Okay, so we want this opening to go to there. So then that means this, for example, I can delete. And maybe this one here I can push to there. Let's see here and here. So how do I now start everything? So for example, I could say, okay, try out this and this and this and this. I fill it actually these edges. So you see this actually this opening seems like a problem but it's not really a problem. And then I can create with control R a loop cut and then this loop cut for example uh, maybe I scale down a little bit. Okay so let me move this one maybe to somewhere else and then let's smooth this again and there you see what we have. So obviously 
uh, I'm on the right track or the direction is good, but the topology I have is not really ideal. This is not really enough enough points. So also a little tip because again this is symmetrical. Just only work on one side. Mirror command, move this over to there. Okay. And now I only have one half to work on. So maybe another loop cut there. GG, bring it to there. Select maybe all, all those. Zack, 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 zack. And then uh, I'm looking along Y, so S, Shift Y, and I scale everything along S and X, but not Y. So, and then this loop cut, maybe G and Y, I push out a little bit more to get that surface back. And there you see now I have um, a different opening. So a little bit more flash. And then I can continue sculpting everything until, for example, it, it gets the shape I like, like I have here. So, and that's basically uh, the way how I got to there. You see, this is actually a, uh, a fairly simple geometry, so it's not very complex. The idea is really well, the trick is really to figure out where do I need to have all these points. Let me turn off the mirror modifier. And there you can see one, two, three, four points on one side. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to here. There you can see here actually I have way too many. So I can start maybe getting rid of some loop cuts. Okay. And let's maybe make an overlay. I can see how this looks now. And then we start moving everything and smooth it out. So it will look nice and round. Okay. So that's basically the way how I did the, the opening. And if I zoom in here, then you can see this is nice and nice and smooth and round. Okay. Let's take a look at this front area here. So let's uh, turn this off. I want to get rid of those. Okay. So you can see actually the the geometry I have. I wanted to have kind of like a sharper edge somewhere and then it should actually flow out. So you see right here this edge connects right onto another edge and then there's no additional loop cut. So let's go back maybe to our test piece here. I have already because I have these two rings this area a little bit straightened but I want this to be more straight and also I want that to be a little bit flat. So we can with the knife tool for example start there click 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 and click OK. So there you can instantly for example see what's happening undo redo undo redo. OK and now I would like this to loop around but that means actually from this corner, nope, from this corner, I need an edge extruded. So what I will do is I will select this face, press X and say, delete only the face. So I maintain the rest. Then I can select this point, E, extrude, select these four points, F, fill it. This one actually has to move up there. And for example, here, this needs to be subdivided, W and then subdivide, press, select this point, GG, move it over, click, 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 and then fill it, and there we are. Okay, so, and now if I select all these points and GZ, move them up, so they all line up, Uh, 
here. Let's go, let's say there and there and there and maybe there. There you can see you now we actually create a nice flat area. Or I could even select these points if I want. This is not what I have in my model, but just uh, to tell you, we can push this down so we can create actually a small depression for the thumb. Okay. And the more I get these points, oh, what happened there? Uh, there's a, a double, okay. Let's remove that double. GG, 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 and GG. So the more we actually get these edges together, you see the more it sharpens, and then there where it flares out, we can soften it. Perfect. Okay, so and that actually is the mystery about how I created this part. So and then the rest here is pretty much very basic geometry modeling. I can turn this off for a second so you can see how this all flows down. So I just extruded these parts down and then how did I build actually this part? Well, I actually did not build the handle and then continued modeling this. I actually built each part individually. So you see this is separate and then this is separate and then with this being my my boundary object, I actually can see exactly the amount of points I need. Keep in mind this also started as a cube and then I subdivided it once, so I have exactly the same polygon or uh, control vertex count than, for example, the handle. And then I have this part here, which I modeled. Now you can see uh, how I try to explore the different um, topologies. And then later I fused them all together, but you can see that the tip here I simplified. For example, in this model here, I have way, way too many uh, CVs. I worked with a uh, polygon circle but that became too much because I can get a nice smooth rounding just with one, two, three, four, five points. And that actually then match, uh, will match also this lower part. So essentially I started to line up everything so I could then join the bottom part and the handle and then simply blend or loft or merge the edges. So everything became exactly one part. Now alternatively, uh, let's say, let me go back to here. Okay. There, if you have something like this, so if you model it now, then we could also say, no, well, we have no actually, uh, let me select this face. Where is that face? There. <clears throat> when we have this and we could extrude this one down okay one time I think there is somewhere a face in between yep there it is delete face okay no it is better and you see I have this really long edge here that's not very good so I will remove it so uh, for example this and E and then I have to move this one to Y, S and Y there, okay. And maybe U and U blend there. Well, this is actually good. I have this situation because you see here with just one, two, three, four, five points, I have a nice rounding. While here, now I have to figure out how the heck do I do actually. Uh, this end. So I have way too many points there. And if I move this a little bit further up, there you can see how I 
have everything. So another case for this might be more circular, but be correct, but it actually gives a lot of problem for the direct modeling because I have to start matching all the, the edges, which is too much work. And you see here um, a lot less points and I still get exactly a nice rounded shape. Okay. So let's take a look actually how I did the rest. So if I hide this one, you can see there's actually the hard plastic part and I have the core and then I have uh, these elements stick out and the rest of the body. And if I hide this one, here, hide this one, and this one, this one, and there you can see we have the overmolded part. Okay, so I will not ask you to rebuild this one in Blender. I was just doing this to see if I can preview or prototype something in Blender. And this is something that's better be done actually later in, in Fusion. However, there's one thing uh, that's actually pretty, pretty nice to point out what we can do in Blender, what we cannot do in Fusion. Because Blender can actually share the mesh data between objects. So these are uh, linked objects. Let me turn off displacement. I can actually, because these are modifiers, obviously modify the geometry. So I wanted to have this rubber overmolded part, but at certain areas I wanted to increase. So how can you do this? So let me go into edit mode. So this is now actually the mesh data and it doesn't matter if we use the blue or the white because it's the same. And there I have a variable offset select. And there you can see all the CVs I selected. This one actually I would like to remove. Okay, select. Now I have only those. So I selected these points that I wanted. Click plus, gave it a name, clicked assign. And now for, for this um, white object, I added then a displacement modifier, added a small positive offset, and then for the vertex group, so it's not offsetting everything, I selected the variable offset that only relates to these points. And there you can see now that which points are actually being offset. For example, if we go to here and say, these remove, you see the surface snaps back, click assign, and there it grows again. So this is a pretty f uh, powerful tool actually when you work on something like this and you want to be able to at one point to say, well, mm, this whole part actually should be a little bit lower. I leave edit mode and you see now everything here updates because they share all the same mesh geometry. Unfortunately, the way how uh, Fusion works, we cannot, and this is probably unique more to a program like Blender or Maya, we cannot actually in traditional CAD share the mesh data because that's normally not even something they work with. And we can load this into T-Spline, but unfortunately we cannot make two different T-Spline objects based on the same geometry. So that means that actually we can build something or we have to build something in here and then we can uh, export, for example, the whole design just with the mirror modifier and the displacement modifier. So this is my overmold part. And then when I turn the displace off, then this is actually my um, my normal plastic part that does not get any rubber or overmold. Because out of these individual 
elements, then I will create the different um, parts. And uh, where is my my core? I think is this the core? Yes. And because I also need to create obviously the 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 inner volume, I can make one linked user again and then give this one a small offset. So now I have like a millimeter of uh, shrinkage. Again, this mirror uh, displacement modifier is in front of the surface modifier, but after the mirror modifier. Because if we do it in front of the mirror modifier, mirror modifier, we might get funny stuff like this. So mirror first, displacement, and then we can simulate how it would look like in T-splines. Okay, so we actually sent three designs over to Fusion. So I will, uh, for example, select this one and then we export it and only the mirror modifier for the normal part. Okay, so this was basically everything to cover in uh, in Blender how I sculpted these parts. You have the reference and screenshots, also the screencast so you can rebuild this comfortably. You can see also here I have a very basic surface and there um, so these meshes actually cut for example these parts. So you can um, build this also in Blender and then do the booleans so we can see how everything works. The trimming actually here with these grooves, that is something I will show you how we we will do in, uh, in Fusion. If you are interested in actually how I did this, you see this is just a very basic box. So I built a box, then I rotated the box, then I gave the box an array modifier. Then you see here we have a vertex group. So select this vertex group. You see I have um, all these, basically the two, uh, sorry, the four points of this box selected. Because again, you see many, many boxes, but actually it's only one box. I created a vertex group for these four points and then I have this surface and I I tell Blender to shrink wrap the faces onto that surface and then also I have this edge and this edge selected and each one has a bevel weight and then I bevel for example the result only along the weight. So like none and weight. So this way then you see it projects everything down and then rounds it. And I do pretty much the same here. Again it's just a very basic box and then I project it onto that surface and then I round it. So let's take a look at Fusion now, how I did everything there. Let's go back to the beginning. So I brought over, for example, this body. And then I brought over the core. So the core is actually, as you can see, a tick smaller with the displacement. If by any chance you start actually, and you can, you're free to do this, you start modeling this directly in T-splines, so in Fusion, and then obviously you cannot use the um, displacement modifier in Blender, but what we can then do instead is actually we go into the T-spline sculpt mode, and to create the offset, we can use this thicken command. And we simply select no edge. We select this body, minus one millimeter. Click OK. 
and now we have there's this the smaller object so it works pretty good in uh, fusion as well the problem is is just unfortunately if maybe we want to adjust the thickness we would have to recreate a new object which is why uh, because I have a, a feature kind of like in, in Blender with the displacement modifier while I prefer these types of tasks to be done in Blender and if I click finish form now there you see we have this one and the smaller one works pretty good okay so let me undo this step so then there's my core. What do we have here? There we have actually the overmolded part sculpted. So this is actually the, um, if you also build everything in Fusion, here's one little trick in uh, how to create, how to get something similar to this overmolded part. So let's say we're here. Now this is good. And I have to make a copy of this and then adjust the geometry. But once you leave T-splines, you actually have a NURBS model. So hmm, how do we make a copy and can modify this copy? Well, the trick is pretty simple. We go into T-splines, right click on our object here and then say save control frames as obj and frames basically should be better called cage so control cage or the polygon cage so this one we can export Ta -da. okay finish form and then i can create a new t-spline feature and then i reinsert the mesh i just created in fusion meter okay and then i convert this one okay there and then i can go ahead and say you and you mm, let me see does it go straight down yes it does okay so move down and maybe this one and this one move up there okay so and then I click finish form so now I have two objects the the normal plastic one and then I have one object where a certain area I expanded the material let me delete these two so that's basically the way how you can then also do the um, offset design of an over or offset the expanded design of an overmolded part in Fusion. Okay, so there's my my rest. And then what do I have here? Then I have actually created myself these surfaces. And a little tip, you see here, I connected these two edges with one line and uh, uh, sorry one face and these two edges I also creased so it's not round but nice and straight because then this whole object when we leave the finished form will be one NURB surface and then I can use this surface to split actually my design with one command. Otherwise I would have to split with the back one and then do another split with the front one. Two tasks and it's unnecessary. And you see also here I have kind of like a, a NURB surface. Now one would say well why do you use actually a surface instead of a, a sketch? Well you could do this with a sketch but the problem is with a sketch you are limited to what you have uh, selectable inside the sketch and then here I can easily move an edge and adjust the surface so I can sculpt actually the surfaces better with T-splines then you can actually do this with line splines or CV curves for this type of a task I think this is more efficient okay so click finish form what do I have here there's a small sketch okay so I start working or creating actually the the structure for these cuts so then I extrude this one 
then I move this for example into the correct position then I make a copy and I move this one to the next position and you see I built I made this cube pretty big uh, so big that actually it intersects the surface because in in Blender I was able to build a smaller cube and then I project a face make it snap actually on this uh, surface we don't have this actually in fusion um, but I can simply build it, overbuild it make it bigger and then we just cut it okay so then I did a very basic array linear array so it works pretty good the cool thing is now if I don't really like the orientation I can go to here adjust this one a little bit click OK and then you see the array updates pretty cool so I work um, kind of like the same way how I how I work in Blender make a box move the box to somewhere at the array modifier yada 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 okay so the problem however is I have now so many boxes and I have a surface to split and I really want to have many split commands no, and because I have a surface I can't have um, kind of like here a profile of a sketch I could extrude and then cut all this top area away but we can do it differently something similar we can even why well, I do sometimes in Blender I take a surface uh, if the boolean modifier is issues with the volume I just give it a volume via the uh, solidify modifier and here I do the same I simply give this a thickness because now this is a volume and then I could say boolean um, combine please keep everything that is inside this box or this volume and get rid of everything else perfect and then I round all these edges also there one feature so one definition for the, the fillet and all edges are done perfect so you see that was pretty easy now comes the fun part so what did this one do ah I see okay ding, ding, ding. let's maybe hide these parts yeah I start actually splitting everything there you see are the different different parts so I split this one apart into this one and this one and this one here we still have for example the core see the core is smaller I also started to give these objects at the moment different colors so it's easier to see what object is what if they're all white it can be a little bit tricky and then I removed actually uh, these other parts because this is just what I wanted to keep because I still have my complete plastic body so then for example I think I cut out the volume of the core out of this over molded part yes that is what I did so let's go edit this feature now you can see cut this over molded part with the core and also all these squares and then I said please keep the tools because I want to maintain having access to them because I need to work with them on the other part so the plastic so there's over molded parts so because then actually here my my plastic body I have to work on as well now then what did I remove uh, do, do, do. I removed certain parts and inside this one because now I have to say I think I, I start yeah so let's go back one step and let's go back yeah, forward one step and you see that something changed and what I did was actually 
I still have this part and you see this actually specifies a volume of my plastic handle and in the solid combine I simply said solid combine this uh, plastic handle mid part with all those squares or boxes but only keep what is inside my handle and this as you can see trimmed everything else away so that's why actually I did not remove this one and then the next step after this would be to add the core model to it there perfect so you see there's a certain logic step by step how uh, you have to build all these different parts and then now we actually show this one and there we can see how everything looks and then the last step I did filleting and hold on it is working see again where you should always do fillets only at the end when you're done because that can be quite time consuming and there we are perfect okay so i will go one step backwards from there so the nice thing is um this is not necessarily as interactive for example as blender because the mesh is not shared, I cannot go into any T-spline object, modify the mesh, and then everything will be updated. So I have to be a little bit more uh, careful, but I still have the ability, for example, to go ahead and adjust, for example, my sculpted overmold. So this is the T-spline object for it. I can go into edit mode and I can go ahead and say well maybe this point move please further out a little bit and you see via the ghosting I can see where my different targets maybe to there click OK finish form and I think that should then update give it a second because there's a lot the software has to crunch through and yeah there it is and you see how this actually grew pretty cool okay so that was basically how to build this uh, in blender and then in fusion in a nutshell where the the differences and where the similarities are and yeah so please go ahead and I kept this on purpose just more as an overview video I, more explaining a little bit on the technical side because at this point with the end of the semester you should really be able to completely sculpt and model the geometry on your own.